I'm a scientist, and today I will try and convince each and every one of you in this room that you can change the world using this, a flash of light. Light is extremely powerful. Think about a normal day and think how many things in your daily routine are somewhat influenced or regulated by light. It starts with yourself in the morning. Waking up right now in the winter, it's so hard. It takes me three coffees to become barely human. In the summer, it just happens by its own. Why? Because you have the sunlight, and it helps us waking up. Then maybe you have a tomato salad for lunch. And trust me, you will be able to taste if these tomatoes have seen real sunlight or if they've been growing somewhere in a hydroponic plant. And then maybe in the evening you're lucky enough to sit outside on the balcony, enjoy a glass of wine, light some candles. It'll take seconds before the first insects and moth are visiting you, and they'll keep flying into or around the light. They can't stop themselves. They're just magically drawn towards it. Mankind has known about the power of light for ages, but only recently scientists have purely understood how it works. And much more interestingly, at least from my perspective, we are now using this for applications that are going to change the world completely within the next 10 or 20 years. It's going to get a bit complicated now, but I do see a lot of smart faces, and I hope that you're going to bear with me. I'm going to make it worth your while, I promise. So, you know how you can nowadays sequence your whole DNA, every single base pair, what we call a genome, in a day or two? So nowadays, you can read through your whole genome and find each and every single mutation that might distinguish you from, let's say, the person sitting on your left side. It's like reading a book about yourself. So now, take a look, look at your left side neighbor and think how he differs from yourself. Maybe he has a different eye color or different color hair, different skin color. Now imagine how many new properties or qualities you can find by comparing yourself with your neighbor. Now you can spin this idea even further and compare yourself to, let's say, eagles, elephants, or dinosaurs. Think about how many new qualities you might find by this comparison. Now, I don't want to disappoint you, but today I want to talk to you about the Book of Algae. Hungry yet? No, sorry to disappoint you. I'm not talking about the algae that's wrapped around your sushi roll that you might have later for lunch or dinner. I'm talking about living algae in the ocean, and they are the main food source for all ocean life. But that's not the only thing that is special about algae. They have a very special quality, which is that they swim towards sunnier regions in the ocean. And this is very beneficial for the algae because they create energy by photosynthesis. So by being closer to the sun and in the sunnier regions of the ocean, they can make more photosynthesis, create more energy, grow faster, be happier, all those things. But the question that remains is, how does the algae swim towards the sun? You know, when it's sunny outside and I decide, I'm going to sit out on the balcony, enjoy a cup of coffee, um, and just enjoy the warmth of the sun. I can do that. I have a conscience. The algae doesn't. So what makes the algae swim towards the sun? It's a so-called photoswitch. A photoswitch is a molecule, so a teeny tiny thing inside the algae that is activated by light. So the sun activates the photoswitch in the algae, activates something in the, in the algae that makes it swim towards the sun. So in the end, the photoswitch really works like a reverse light switch. You know, when you get home at ha come home at night, you turn on the light, you, s you, you hit the button and the light goes on, that's a light switch. A photoswitch works the exact opposite. So the light activates a switch inside a cell and activates something inside the cell. 
Now, you might rightfully say, why the heck would I care? Algae, sunlight, this is not my field. I, I don't, sorry, I really don't give a damn. I'll tell you why you should care. Let me introduce you to my little pet friend, Pete, here. Pete, like myself, is a big old sun lover. He likes to sit in the sun all day long, and he's not a big fan of sunscreen. So now, unfortunately, he has a tumor on his right ear. What does it mean for Pete? Chemotherapy, radiation therapy, operation, all of those things? No, none of these things. Because Pete is not just a normal mouse. Pete is a lab mouse. So Pete can try something that nobody else has ever tried before. And for this, unfortunately, we're going to have to take some blood from Pete. So we're taking a syringe. I mean, sorry about that, but taking some blood from Pete. So now in the syringe, I have Pete's blood. And so in the syringe, I also have immune cells from Pete. Now, we all know immune cells, right? They keep us healthy, and they create antibody after we had a vaccination at the doctor. But one very important thing that many people do not know about immune cells is they also kill cancer cells. And only when the immune cells fail to do their job properly is when cancer cells can accumulate in our body and become a tumor. So now, what can we do with these immune cells that we have in our syringe? You know, using a sing similar technology that we're using to read our genome and to read the book about ourselves or about other species, we can also copy-paste single paragraphs or chapters from one book to another. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy-paste a photo switch into Pete's immune cells. And now these immune cells can be regulated by light as well. So I'm going to inject these cells back into Pete. Now, through Pete, we have circulating immune cells that can get activated by light. All we have left to do is take our flashlight, hold it to Pete's right ear, and locally activate immune cells. This is going to locally launch an immune response against the cancer cells and eradicate the cancer from Pete. You know what the best thing about Pete is? Pete is real. If you can activate the slides, this is real Pete. This is real Pete with his little battery backpack and an LED stuck to his ear. The story of Pete was published last year by Rochester University in New York. Think about what Pete might mean for cancer therapy of humans within the next 10 years. Now, photo switches, or how other people might call them optogenetic proteins, are still truly a hidden treasure. I'm currently forming a company around this technology, and I can promise you it bears enough potential for everyone in this room to build their own company on it. Just if cancer, ther cancer therapy might not be um, a good enough example for you, I'm going to give you three more examples how this technology can change the world and the rest of you are going to have to find their own ideas, unfortunately. Example one is also therapeutic. Think about diabetes. It's a big pain. Not only do you have to monitor your blood, le your blood sugar levels, you also have to inject yourself with insulin. It's, it's a real pain. Even if you have an insulin pump, it's, you have to inject yourself several days. And what people have done is they use these photo switches to create a light-induced insulin pump. So what you get is you put a little implant under your skin, which is an LED light connected to a light-releasing insulin pump, and you just control it with your smartphone. So you realize you need insulin, you just activate the light with your smartphone via Bluetooth, the light goes on, insulin is released, done. Super easy. Great idea to form a company on. Example number two, completely different. Think about natural catastrophes, oil spills. How do you clean oil spills at home, like when you spill some olive oil on the counter? I usually use some soap and water, 
and I mix it all up, and then I put it down the drain and let somebody else deal with it. Unfortunately, that's not what we can do in the ocean. We can't just pour liters and liters of soap into it. Unless we could regulate the soap with light. And this has been established. So now we can just take the contaminated water, fill it up with soap, clean it all out, activate it again with light, and separate the soap from the oil from the water. It's that easy. Great idea for a company. Example number three, production processes. Think about how we add ethanol or alcohol to our fuels to increase the amount of regenerative energies when we're driving our car. How is this ethanol produced? We're using yeast, and these yeast produce ethanol, um, and we mix it in. The problem that we all know is that at some point, when, uh, when yeast creates, uh, produces ethanol, it kills itself with the amount of ethanol. So what you can do now using photo switches is, first you tell the yeast, oh, you know, just grow. Don't bother with the ethanol, just grow and be happy. And then you turn on the light and tell the yeast, now produce as much ethanol as you can. And using this technology, scientists were able to increase the amount of ethanol three times. Now you think yeast and ethanol, I know what she's talking about. She's talking about beer brewing. Yes, you can also start a company brewing beer with photo switches. You can use one kind of yeast and create five or ten different kinds of beer with the same yeast. So tonight when you get home and you turn on the light at home, I want you to think about algae. I want you to think about cancer therapy. I want you to think about diabetes, oil spills, and maybe beer brewing. And I want you to think about how you can change the world in a flash of light. Thank you. <laughs>